In this third video over Unit 1, Section 7, we're going to be focusing on more periodic trends, this time specifically electronegativity. Now, electronegativity is a measure of how well an atom can attract an electron. So let's compare these two atoms right here, magnesium and chlorine. So which one of those is going to attract an electron more effectively? Well, let's think about what's going on here. Chlorine has more protons than magnesium. It has a greater effective nuclear charge, as you might remember in our graphic from the last video. And as a result, since it has greater effective nuclear charge, it can attract electrons in much better. So higher electronegativity. On the other hand, magnesium over here has fewer protons, so it's going to have a lower effective nuclear charge, a lower electronegativity. So let's compare these two, fluorine and iodine. Well, remember, when we're talking about up and down, we need to be thinking about this in terms of the distance from the electrons to the nucleus. Here in iodine, we have more occupied energy levels, which means we have a greater distance from the nucleus to those outermost electrons, which means it can't attract in those electrons from farther away, so a lower electronegativity. On the other hand, fluorine has fewer occupied energy levels. So as a result, there's a smaller distance from the nucleus to those last electrons. So we'd say it has a higher electronegativity. So once again, here is, here's that cheat sheet again, except I've, I've put in electronegativity this time. It's higher, generally speaking, as you go to the top and to the right, and it's lower as you go toward the left and to the bottom, as you can see here. So those are the same reasons that we talked about earlier. Just as a, as a side note, normally we don't talk about the electronegativity of the noble gases. Those, technically they do have an electronegativity, but we don't worry about those. We kind of uh, is focus on the others. Fluorine, just so you know, has the highest uh, electronegativity of all the elements. Uh, the lowest, of course, will be down here with francium and cesium in, in that area. Now let's backtrack a bit and talk about first ionization energy. We talked about this uh, two videos ago in the Section 7 uh, first video, Part A there. And we said that the first ionization energy is the amount of energy that's required to remove the very last electron in an atom. That's the least tightly held electron, the one that's farthest away. So let's compare these two. We have magnesium and we have argon. Can you tell me which one has the greater first ionization energy? I hope you're thinking it's argon, right? And we know that it's farther to the right, but don't say that as the reasoning. You want to say why. It's got more protons, greater effective nuclear charge. If you're comparing right and left, talk about greater effective nuclear charge. So it's got the higher first ionization energy. On the other hand, magnesium has fewer protons. As a result, a lower effective nuclear charge and a lower first ionization energy. Now, let's compare top and bottom. Let's compare helium with xenon. Now, both of these have a, have a pretty high first ionization energy, but which one is higher? Now, we, hopefully you remember the graphic and know that helium, being higher up, is going to have the higher first ionization energy. Now, xenon is lower. Why? Well, more occupied energy levels, which means there's a greater distance from the nucleus to those outermost electrons, so it's going to be easier to remove that last electron. Lower first ionization energy. Helium is the opposite. You've got fewer electron shells, occupied energy levels, so the distance from the nucleus to those last electrons will be much smaller, so higher first ionization energy. So hopefully, at this point, you've learned uh, the reasons, and we've hopefully seen lots of examples of that. So here is the graphic again. Uh, that's one that you want to 
to try to remember as much as you can. Left and right, you want to talk about effective nuclear charge. Top and bottom, you want to talk about number of occupied energy levels and electron distance. So let's wrap it up here by answering this question. Using principles of atomic structure, explain why the first ionization energy of sulfur is lower than that of oxygen. So if you take out your periodic table, you'll see that oxygen is higher up on the table. Sulfur is just underneath it. So you want to talk about this in terms of occupied energy levels and electron distance. So that's going to be the reasoning. So you want to say that the valence electrons in sulfur are farther away. They occupy a higher shell or a higher uh, uh, energy level than those in oxygen. So that means that the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons is, is farther. It's greater in sulfur than it is in oxygen. So what's going on here? Well, that greater distance or that greater separation in sulfur means that we're going to have weaker coulombic attractions. That means weaker attractions between protons and electrons. Uh, and that means that in sulfur, your outermost electrons are less tightly bound. And it's easier to remove them compared to what you have in oxygen. So that's how you would want to, to explain this. You want to make your claim, make your evidence or give some evidence, and then give the relevance or explain why it matters. That's where you close the deal. We'll talk more about this as we write more essays and practice this later. Thanks for watching. This is the third in a fairly major section of Unit 1. Join me in my next video for Unit 1, Section 8.